Welcome back. This is Larry Benko, W0QE, and it's hard to believe, but it's been 11 months since I produced a video. People have sent me questions asking me whether I had health problems or whether I just lost interest in doing videos, and the answer to those, both those questions is no. I haven't gone anywhere, but COVID-19 happened and life sort of changed. My wife and I spent the past year mountain biking most every day. I live in a good place to do this, and an hour to the trailhead, two or three hours of good hard exercise, an hour, an hour back home, a little bike maintenance, and I was pretty much toast for the day. I did continue to, to debug new SimSmith versions, answered questions I received, and if you asked ask me something I didn't respond, uh, please ask me again, and I'm sorry about that. I didn't think much about new videos, though. I also thought I'd covered most topics applicable to SimSmith, but now I realize that's probably was incorrect. So now would be a good time to give me some feedback or suggestions if you wouldn't mind. I'd like to know how to better include new and less RF experienced users. SimSmith is a really capable program, but it's also complicated, and I get the feeling that a lot of people have downloaded SimSmith and really use it once or twice and sort of lose, either lose interest or they don't know where to go. And I did a series of videos for that I called the basic series, but it was done with a much earlier version of SimSmith, and maybe it needs to be refreshed. I also don't know, perhaps I missed some topics. Give me some, ex, you know, some examples of topics I missed along the way that would help inexperienced users. Also, the number of views you get on a video is really mystifying. I do a video I think is really important. It doesn't get a lot of views. I do another one I don't think is nearly as important, and I get a lot of views. I don't know if that's the titling of the video or what, but uh, YouTube is not a job for me. I don't monetize it in any fashion, so I don't really care if I get a lot of views. What I'd like to do is topics that people appreciate, that's all. Another question is, should videos try to be standalone? If the videos are simple, standalone videos are fine, where I explain every aspect of the, of the SimSmith uh, program along the way. But that makes videos that are fairly complicated to be really long, and I get the feeling long videos aren't really very popular. So again, some feedback plays. Should I include more VNA measurements? When I started doing videos a little over three years ago, not everybody had a VNA. Now with the Nano VNA being out, or the Nano VNA in one of its variants, there really is no reason a person shouldn't have a VNA. A VNA coupled with SimSmith is really a valuable tool in order to understand RF. A VNA by itself is not nearly as good as a VNA coupled with SimSmith, and SimSmith by itself without a VNA is not nearly as good either. This is not a VNA channel in any way, shape, or form, as the Nano VNA is nothing more than a tool. It's not a cult following, as some people seem to think it is. It's a tool, just like a voltmeter or oscilloscope or anything else. Should I include more construction examples? Should I make the SimSmith files downloadable or not? I have kind of mixed feelings about that. If I make them downloadable, then when SimSmith versions change, I get a lot of questions as to what it doesn't work anymore. That happened primarily when we went from version 15 to version 16, where the whole plotting format changed. But if people would rather the SimSmith files be downloadable, I can easily do that. I don't get a lot of requests for downloads, but I do get a few. Upcoming possible videos. I've done a bunch recently here in the past few weeks about measurements of non 50 ohm circuits with a 50 ohm VNA, which is kind of an interesting topic. Any topic I produce about ferrite, powder and iron cores, common mode current seems to generate comments, which indicates there's a lot of lack of understanding the, of those topics. Also, things like power combiners and splitters. I've received a lot of comments about what I do uh, more videos about different kind of combiners and splitters, and there's a ton of different ways to split and combine RF power. Also, PI, T, bridge T, minimum loss attenuators. That seems to be something that people don't don't really appreciate the the value and the use of. How about matching ranges of any tuner versus frequency? Uh, there's a lot of tuners out there that people seem to think are all general purpose. They aren't really general purpose. They don't don't really cover a wide range. But, you know, with a tuner, if it covers the range for the antenna that you have, it cut its wide range because that's all you needed. Anyways, that's all I have for today. But give me some uh, feedback, please, if you wouldn't mind. And as usual, I appreciate the comments and uh, there'll be more.